Well, hello there. I'm Aaron and this is Barbecue with Franklin. Today we're gonna learn how to prep and smoke and cook and eat a pork butt. That's from the shoulder. We're in Texas and everybody knows, everybody knows, everyone knows that pulled pork doesn't really make it down to Texas. I happen to really like pork and I happen to really like pulled pork. We're gonna do kind of a Texas version of a non-Texas meat. We're gonna start off with a dry rub. Well, looky here, black pepper. Since we're in central Texas, we're gonna go pretty heavy on the black pepper, about like that, yay amount. It's a big piece of meat, so it can take a lot of salt, unlike ribs or, or maybe chicken or something. Salt pepper to ratio is about like I do on briskets, it's about half and half. For pork butt, I'm gonna want a little bit of color, so I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika here. It's not so much for flavor, it's more just to kind of make it look neat, because it's a dark red and it'll look really nice with the smoke. Gonna get some savory action there, not a whole lot. Gonna do some onion powder. You wanna be careful that your onion powder isn't too powdered, it's more granulated. If it is a powder, it'll kind of tend to clump up and it, it won't really get in there quite as well as you want it to. Same thing with the garlic powder. About like that. You know, I think that's probably about it. For pork, I tend to use a shaker for it, much like ribs. Looking more for presentation. I want the rub to really get on there. I don't want it to be clumpy. I don't want it to be, you know, just kind of like haphazardly thrown on there. A brisket cooks for a really long time, so you can do that because the smoke and the color is going to cover it up. Not necessarily the case with pork because it's not going to cook quite as long. I'm going to use a shaker. And then I'm going to shake it up. I think that's looking real nice. You can see the paprika in there. It's got a nice red tint to it. It's gonna look real pretty. The pepper's gonna look nice and the salt's gonna make it taste good. That's our dry rub for a pork butt. Let's figure out what a pork butt is. We got a pork butt here. I'm gonna cut this thing open. But before that, let's talk about a pork butt. Where it comes from on the pig. A lot of people think, oh, it's a pork butt. It's coming from the rear end. Alas, my good friends, not so. Pork butt is the top part of the shoulder. You've got the shank down here where the joints are, and then right above that, you've got the, the pork butt. It's called a shoulder butt, or a Boston butt, if you will. That might be what it's called at a grocery store. I love a clean hand. Slice it open, just any old knife will work fine. If you're not buying at a store where you can go to the butcher cabinet and just get one, you're gonna probably end up with two. They always come in two packs. Set that off to the side. All right, so we've got our pork butt here. It's got fat on one side, you kind of roll it over. It's got a, a couple different muscles. We're not really gonna get into that right here. If we were doing competition stuff, we would, but we're not doing competition stuff. So we're just gonna cook this thing to tenderness, shred it to pieces and go to town. We do have a, a bone in there, a blade bone, and that's the shoulder blade. So that's the thing that we're gonna be paying attention to later when we're cooking it. For pork butts, I don't really trim a butt very much. It's got a lot of fat. It's a pretty bland meat. So you really want that fat to really cook down in there. If it's got something kind of hanging off like that, I'll slice that off, otherwise, I'm really not gonna do anything to it. But since I just happen to have a knife here, just looking to cut something, I guess. A lot of people could put different slathers or different things on this. All I'm gonna do is put a little bit of olive oil on it just to make the rub stick. Like I said before, it's a huge piece of meat. It can handle a lot of rub, so I wanna make as much stick on there as possible. So just kinda get it going on there. This will kinda help it get a little bit of color, too, because there's not a whole lot of blood involved here. Looking pretty good. We've got our trusty dry rub right here. Got it opened up. I'm talking about being liberal with it. It's gonna put a lot of rub. And this is kind of where the Texas style comes in. If you were doing a pork butt in other regions, you wouldn't have nearly this much black pepper in there. But since we're in Texas, and Texans love black pepper, we're gonna put a lot of pepper on there. You can see the paprika in there. It's gonna add some color here in a little bit. And all this rub is gonna make a really nice brisket-like bark. Really pat it in there. And there you go, that is a very nicely rubbed pork butt. Shoulder butt, Boston butt. If you wanted, you could let it rest for a little bit and let the moisture kind of help soak in some of the rub. I'm not gonna mess with it, I'm normally in a hurry, so we're gonna put it right on right now. It's really pretty looking. Let's put it on. So 
So we've got our cooker up to 275 degrees. That's always kind of my go-to temperature. It's kind of squarish, so we're just gonna put it on fat side up. If it looks like here in a few hours, it's not getting enough color on one side, which on this particular cooker it will. You could flip it over if maybe the fat's not rendering out as quickly as you want it to. You could try to flip it, but for now, fat side up. That sounds really good. Since we're in Texas, I want it to look more like a brisket than an actual traditional pork butt. I want it to get really black and crusty and just a really thick bark on it. Right before I get ready to wrap it in foil, probably here in about four or five hours, I'm gonna be watching this fat and it's gonna get real barky and then eventually it's gonna split. And when it splits, that kind of lets me know that it's about time to wrap it real tight in foil and fill up a water pan. Water pans will help a lot with pork butt. Five hours in, it's been maintaining at 275. Let's check it out. Oh yeah, that's cute. This is not a Memphis style, nor is it a Carolina style pulled pork. This is Texas style. So, it's got a real briskety looking bark here. It's kind of crunchy, it's looking good. I'm spritzing it with apple cider vinegar. You could do apple juice, you could do water, you could throw some hot sauce in there if you want. I like the hot sauce thing. But the point is that you're keeping it moist. In an effort to preserve the bark, I shall use me trusty towel pick it up and it's still got a long ways to cook but I want to wrap it in foil just to keep the smoke off of it and I don't want it to burn up and I don't want it to dry out Ooh, look at the juice coming out that looks real nice that's pretty also looking at the fat we cooked it fat side up right here the fat split and that kind of just from doing this a whole bunch gives me the idea that you know it's about ready to wrap that's kind of when I lift up the lid and I'm looking just taking a quick peek I'm always checking to see if the fat is already split on top of here and it has and it's been split for a while Five hours in, we're gonna wrap it up. So I've got the foil laid out right here. I've got it double layered on the bottom in case I scrape it on the bottom of the grate right there. I don't wanna tear it, because once this thing gets wrapped up, it's gonna start collecting all the fat, everything that's cooking out of it, and I wanna retain that moisture. Pork has a lot of fat in it, and it's gonna cook out. Of course, you wanna keep that, because that's just flavor. I'm just gonna spritz it. I'm gonna get it pretty wet. It's the last time I'm gonna see this thing before it's finished and unwrap it. Hopefully you won't have a squeaky table. Put it back on. Shut the lid and maintain at 275 degrees. About eight hours into this pork butt cook. I suspect it's about done. So I'm gonna lift it up. We're gonna open up the foil pack. I'm gonna kind of twist the blade bone a little bit. Let it rest for about 30, 45 minutes, somewhere around in there. And shred it to bitsies. Unfortunately, one of the things about using foil is that you actually have to physically unwrap it to check out the meat. If you're not using foil or wrapping anything, you can just look at it and it's, it's ready to go. Kind of open this thing up. Can unwrap it. We've been cooking fat side up. Oh, hello, that looks good. So we've got this thing done right now. I'm gonna kind of grab the bone. You know what pork butt's done? When you can grab the bone and if the bone slides out or if it's letting go, Right there, that feels just about right. It's gonna carry over just a little bit farther while we let it rest. So this pork butt's been resting for about 35 minutes now. The important thing about resting meat is that you want it to reabsorb the moisture, because if you just pull it off and it's still raging hot, it's still cooking, it's still, the muscles are still tightening up, they're still pushing out moisture. So you really gotta let it rest. If you don't, it'll look great when you shred it, but it's gonna be dry within just a few, just mere seconds, it's gonna dry out. Pick this up. You know it's ready to pull when you can hold it with your bare hands. That is a nice looking pork boot. We're very simply just gonna shred it. We're doing it in a foil pan to kind of keep all the juices in there. You could put a vinegar sauce in there if you wanted. You could put a sweet sauce on there if you wanted. The world is yours, it's pork. You can do, do anything you want. We really don't have any rules in Texas for pulled pork other than it's smoky and it's good. Gonna kind of simply just pull it apart. Ah, oh, that fat, I like it. This looks really, oh, what's the term I look for? Delicious. There are a couple certain muscles in there that you would want to pull out if you're doing a competition, but not for sandwiches necessarily. Just dig in, shred it up. I like to keep kind of bark in there. You can pick up this bone right here. That's a sign of a good pork butt. If you could pull out the bone with great ease, it's done, it's tender. And when it looks like this and it's still moist, you know you've got a winner. 
This pan is too small. Got the pork butt shredded here. It's looking really good. We got a good even mix of bark, inside meat. It's really moist. I really am excited about this. It's not every day I eat on camera. That's really good. I think you're on your own with this. I'm, I'm taking this one with me.